Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, another tough road trip this week, uh, heading to Lubbock. Uh, another uh, night game on the road. Um, I think a really good football team. Uh, Coach McGuire has done a phenomenal job. Got a ton of respect for for him and his program. Um, and uh, you know, I think they've got one of the best running backs. For sure in the Big 12 and probably in the country, probably not getting recognized enough. He is in the Big 12, but nationally I think he's one of the best um, that we've got to do a phenomenal job of, of trying to, you're not going to shut it down, but trying to control the rush game. And then on defense, they do a great job of getting pressure with their front four. Their front four is is uh, really good. they got dynamic guys, and then they've got really physical, long DBs and linebackers. So, uh, bottom line for us is we need to be better across the board than matter if it's um, by a position, it's by a unit, offense, defense, and special teams. And um, had a good uh, practice uh, yesterday, coming off of a, a couple of quote off days of Saturday and Sunday, even though we met uh, on Saturday. And um, you guys had a good workout yesterday, and we got to come up with great plans because it's going to be a big challenge. What was that Saturday evening like? It was rough. Um, mainly because we we know we can be better, um, and um, collectively, and there really wasn't any finger pointing because I think all phases need to be better, um, and w all positions within the units can be better. What was it like on Friday night? Being part of that, just trying to understand what is going on. We're not they didn't seem locked in on the task at all. Um, Part of that's the opponent. I thought Oklahoma State played really well. Um, I thought they were they were physical. I thought the environment got a handful of, of, of our guys, probably some of our younger guys. The environment was a little bit um, uh, maybe bigger than what they're what they're ready for. But uh, that's why we've got to do a good job of, of preparing them, and um, we just got to be better. Bottom line, I mean, we can we've got to try to pick it apart, try to get game plans, but. We also said after Saturday, we're going to flush it and move on. Okay. You're, I, I believe, outside of the pandemic season, you're now one and four after a bye week. Is, is that worthy of looking at what you're doing and how the guys are coming out of that? Um, I don't know. Probably a good question, uh, Fitz. We've probably done something different each time um, that we've played. Uh, you know, whether or not that's home or away, whether or not there's – Injury factors, whether or not it's preparation factors, whether or not it's getting out of routine, um, you know, it's something we'll look at. Do you have a status update on either Jacob Parrish or Will Lee right now? Um, Will hasn't practiced and will most likely be out. Jacob will be day to day. When you look at the offense, what's maybe one or two keys to getting the receivers uh, going, get a little bit more production out of those guys? Uh, everything from. Uh, schemes to uh, them doing a great job of beating man coverage or sitting down in zone um, protection um, getting the ball out on time um, making the right reads uh, with with quarterback I mean it's collective it's across the board it's not it's not just one thing it's it's uh, uh, as well as us running the football better we didn't run the football well enough on Saturday or Friday and uh, will Howard's a quarterback who's never really had problems with interceptions until just recently. So how do you how do you and him sit down and kind of map out? Yeah, he, he's got to take care of the ball better. Um, and, and you know, I like him to be aggressive, but he, he can't be, um, you know, to a point where it, it's putting the team uh, and the offense at risk. And there was a couple of throws, um, you know, last week that uh, absolutely he knows he can't make. Um, he hasn't made those in the past, to your point. Um, and, uh, you know, we believe in Will. Um, let's not forget he helped us win a Big 12 championship, so we, we're not going to give up on him like I think people want us to. Um, and we've got a guy that's running that room that knows what he's doing in Colin Klein. And I love CK. Got a ton of faith in Colin Klein, as everybody else should, uh, being K-Staters, and we'll get this figured out. You have to overcome a sense that you have to play extraordinary football when it really comes down to just getting back to the basics. Well, um, that's part of what our issue is across the board. We didn't block well enough on offense. We didn't tackle well enough. So, yeah, we need to just get back to some basic stuff. That's why we talked as a staff on Saturday and Sunday about trying to simplify some of our plans 
um, offensively and defense and even on special teams so that the kids can play with more confidence and play with better technique. Uh, today we'll, we'll do a little bit more uh, good on good than we've probably done in the last couple of weeks going the, the, the ones against the ones. Part of that is having that extra day because it's, it's – and the fact we came off of a, a bye week, it's hard to do that in week 9, 10, and 11, or 8, 9, 10, when guys are, are just beat to heck after a ball game. We've had a couple of days to rest, and I think our guys are at least fresh. And when it comes to turnovers defensively, is it kind of a mix of yeah. uh, being aggressive and just being assignment sound? It's Yeah, it's everything. Once they come, they might come in bunches. Um, you know, we've got to do a great job of stripping the football, a la what Des did against UCF. Um, we've got to get our eyes and head back around better in man coverage from a from a corner and, and a safety perspective. Um, you know, we're playing a lot of new guys at corner that, uh, um, you know, Echo and Julius played a lot of snaps there for an awful long time. And so we're, we're going through some growing pains with some, some younger guys, um, but they're going to get better. Situation being what it is, can you describe Ken Azel Thomas and Donovan McIntosh? Yeah, Donovan's going to redshirt. Ken uh, playing um, on some special teams, continuing trying to push him so that he can uh, be a factor. Um, it's it's a different game in, in college than it is in high school with how fast the game goes, um, getting a lot of the calls right, understanding your technique. Um, we moved Jordan right back from safety to corner, which will give us uh, another player there as well if we're down some guys. Um, but the bottom line is whether or not that is Keenan Garber, Justice James, Jordan Wright, Kanigel. If those four have to be the corners, then um, A, we've got to be able to help them and protect them some, and then they've got to rise up. On a positive note, what have you been the most thrilled about your team through five games? Um, you know, uh, probably it's hard to say because we've been so inconsistent. You know, um, Jack Bloomer has been a bright spot for us uh, after he struggled maybe the first game. I think he's been really, really good. Um, I, I'm pleased with a kid like Austin Romaine that, I mean, he's had to take on a huge role from a six year guy. Um, and doing what he's doing at, at Mike Linebacker. And uh, I think Marquis Siegel has turned into one of the best uh, defensive backs in the league right now. So, I mean, there's some bright players, but we have to collectively be better at each unit. So there's there's some things that, you know, we're still working through. Conversely, were you able to kind of determine what happened on that errant snap on fourth and eight? between Communication between uh, – a, guy that's been around here an awful long time and a quarterback that's been around here a long time. As far as kind of figuring out how to get the receivers kind of jump started here, has there been any thought of, of putting more of a load on, on some of the, the younger guys and seeing how they how they do? Yeah, you bet. More on the receivers. Looking back at the film on – of Friday's game, did you see anything with lack of effort or guys not going 100 percent? No, no, um, that that is not happening. Um, uh, we went against some good players and they got their hands on us as well as we didn't have very much time to throw the football. Um, it's not a collective just receiver issue, guys. We've got to protect better. We got to throw the ball on time better. Um, we've got to run routes better without question, but it's like, why didn't we, you know, run the football well at, at times? Well, the offensive line and uh, the running back and the tight ends and the wideouts cracking people and the quarterback making the right read. It's never going to be one person uh, or one position. And that's where, you know, I've been doing this a long time. The successful teams have all 11 guys on the same page and all 11 guys playing with really good technique, and that's not what we're doing right now. Coach, what can you say about Texas Tech, and can you just break them down a little bit for us? Um, probably inconsistent early in the year, and, and you saw that with a loss to a good Wyoming team. 
but have found their footing. You know, they had a change at quarterback because they had a, the young man get hurt that uh, uh, was very similar to Daniel Green. He gets hurt. You know, he's one of those guys that's gotten hurt the last few years. It's just it, it stinks for him, and I know it does for Joey as well. But, um, you know, I thought they played – well against West Virginia and West Virginia, like I told people, was going to be really good this year, uh, and they had a chance. They changed that. That was when the kid got hurt, and they had a chance to to tie it late. Um, and then um, they got after Houston and they got after Baylor, and so I think they're playing uh, some of their best football right now. And and when you can run the football like they're running the football, a lot of things open up in the pass game, and that's what they're doing. And then they're just they're just laying their ears back and playing aggressive defense. Their environment like particularly at 6 p.m. It, it, it's a tough environment for sure, especially when when we got to go play another night game. Um, you know, I, we've been in there once at night, once in the morning, um, and it, they've got a really good fan base and they're loud and and um, it'll be a big challenge for us to make sure that we can handle the noise, especially at night. And um, you know, that's I think we're going into another blackout or something. You know, those are. You know, the the night games are, are a tough deal on the road because you're in the hotel all day, but that's the hand we're dealt. So we've got to be able to to do a great job of adjusting to it and make sure that um, uh, our guys are prepared and ready. Did you notice any change from their offense with the new quarterback in there? Not really. The other kid ran the ball a little bit more. Now they're, they're utilizing their running back probably uh, a, a little bit more. Not that the other one, not that Morton can't run it. I think he can. I think, you know, when you lose one, you don't want to lose two. Um, and uh, uh, their RPO game is really good, and they're what we call their access throws. They're going to spread people from sideline to sideline, and if you don't cover people down and have you know two on two or or three on three out there, the ball is going out there, and it's an extension of a run play. Uh, and that's what they got us on last year uh, a handful of times because their tempo is so fast that um, if you don't get lined up, you, you're going to get exposed. How do you game plan? For a team like them that leads the country and fourth down going for it in that situation, um, you know your your third down package changes quite a bit because you you don't have a lot of your uh, exotic blitzes and stuff because it, third and ten can get to fourth and four. It's a go situation, but they've been like that ever since Coach McGuire got there, um, and uh, you know, we just have to be prepared to play four downs. We did here last year quite a bit. Have to play. Uh, four down football and and uh, you know we were a benefit of it one time because we got a big time stop and, and scored after it early in a game and um, it, it can be a big momentum shift if you get that fourth down um, and, and keep the drive alive and score so um, it, it's kind of changed obviously everybody's seen it change a little bit in college football with people going for it more and forth. What's the biggest challenge with Taj Brooks what what makes him so tough? His ability to not take negative plays. You know, he finds a way to get north and south in a hurry. He finds a way to, you know, not not get tackled on an arm tackle. You, you know, you, you wish the kid you could get him run east and east and west, um, but he'll ultimately get those shoulders turned or he's going to stiff arm you and get around the corner. And uh, um, I just – he's – we've played against him before, uh, but you can tell he's running with a ton of passion and confidence. Oklahoma State, uh, it seemed like you maybe played off a little bit more and they, they got you on a lot of yeah. slants, but you didn't give up touchdowns. Yeah, was that kind but, of? But we've got to correct it. You know, we were too soft. I mean, that was something that we talked about even at halftime and we got better in the second half. But um, we can't be so so soft on those easy access throws. Those, those, those definitely hurt us. But you're also playing with guys, aren't Jacob Parrish and stuff, that it's it was a little bit different environment, so that's why we have to find ways to to give those guys some relief too. Whether we put somebody out and and, and buzz a, a backer or safety or roll a corner up a time or two, we've got to find some ways so that they're not playing one on one football for seventy snaps. That's a long day. Was that a positive though? You held them to field goals. For you the know, most part. Um, yes and no. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yes and no. Every time we've gone down there, um, we've not played our best, but found a way to stay in it simply because of that. And so, yeah, I'm really proud that um, we played good red zone defense, held them to field goals, 
kept us in the game as poorly as we were playing with the, with the ball in their territory, a chance to tie. But the reality of it is you, you're just – they're having the ball so long and making drives. And um, I know we did a good job holding the field goals, but we've done that for three straight years that we've been there, and that's not good enough. First game back with DJ and, and, and Trey Sean in the backfield. How, how happy were you with how they split and everything? You know, they split okay. Um, it's just it was, it was just tough sledding running the football, you know. Um, and I thought Trey Sean made some nice runs. I thought DJ made some – Nice runs. We just couldn't stay consistent with it um, where, you know, the big difference in the game is they had a lot of second and shorts and we had second and long. So we'd make a run and think it's a good run and it's still second and eight or seven. They make a run and it was second and four all the time. So, um, and I can't even remember the game's been so long ago who had how many carries because we didn't, you know, Will was our leading rusher by far. Um, but we need to make sure that our backs are involved more rushing the football for us to set up some of our play action stuff. If we're not running the ball with our running backs, um, and, and it's happened a couple games to us this year, it's harder to throw the football. Two games now without Daniel Green. How do you feel like the uh, the communication part of the it's defense? Do, it's is doing there? really well because of Austin Moore, um, Des Purnell. Both those two kids are playing at an all conference level. Austin Romaine is ready for the moment. It's been fun to watch a true freshman play inside linebacker in the Big 12 at a high level like he has. Um, it's helped us that Jake Clifton has, has come back. So um, we're still pretty thin there. Where it hurts us more than anything is um, not having Dez and Jake and Austin Moore on more special teams. And with the amount of plays that we're asking those guys to play, it's it's difficult because you can't take them off the field on defense. That kind of taps into where I was going to go, uh, the progress you've seen from Austin Romaine to this point. Yeah, it's been really good uh, as far as I, we knew he was a physical player, but um, it, how smart he is and how willing he is to go punch his, his face in the middle of that, knowing where his fit is and being aggressive on it. It's been fun to fun to watch him. Uh, we were fortunate we had him at camp when he was a, a senior in high school, and we saw some of those physical, some of the physicality that he's showing. Um, but you just still doesn't, you don't know how it's going to translate to the college game from the mental side of things. That's where he's been um, really, really good, and you can tell him compared to some of the other freshmen that we're trying to play. Um, just from a mentality and, and understanding what we're doing, he's just so much further along. Is there is there kind of a not positive necessarily, but you know they're not only, a whole lot right now. <laughs> it's okay, man. We got to get better. It's all right. We've only lost one game in the conference. Everything is still yeah. very much in front of you as far as what your goals were to start off out yeah. the season. Is that something that you can kind of yeah. build off of? Um, yes, yes, and no. Um, I, I I know that that's out there in the big picture and what we have kind of urged our guys, especially the new guys, especially the, the guys that whether or not you were on the team last year, but you didn't maybe travel or you weren't really a huge part of it or you're brand new to it of not just blocking out the outside noise of hearing, hey, we're still in great shape or we still have an opportunity and all this other stuff, but to lock into the inside noise. And when that inside noise is the Austin Moores and, and the Cooper Beebe's and the Phillip Brooks and um, the Kobe Savages and the guys that have been around here to say, guys, we have to do this one day at a time. We better win today's practice. And if we can win today's practice and, and prepare and get ready for Wednesday's practice, we have a great opportunity to be successful on Saturday. And right now, I think we're listening too much to that outside noise of what we can be rather than working on what we should be and, and, and need to be. Possibility of still being able to redshirt Avery has that played a factor at all at him not coming in the last couple of games? Nope, it hasn't. You know, it, it's one of those things where um, once again, uh, I'm, I'm going to trust the guy that's running that room because I love the guy and Colin Klein knows what he's doing, and uh, we have a good plan. Did it help? Uh, disappointing as the game was that it was on a Friday that you you maybe get an extra day to kind of flush it and. Yep. Uh, more than anything, I'm hoping it helps us um, 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as our preparation. You didn't see as many guys sore um, because of us doing things on Saturday morning. It was it was it was a day for us. It wasn't an optional day. It was a, a full day for us, and so we got guys recovered. We we did. Um, some lifting with the guys that hadn't hadn't played as much. Uh, we were able to put the the game to rest so that uh, yesterday we were able to get right into the uh, game planning of Texas Tech. Uh, our energy, our catapult numbers were much better on Monday than they've ever been because guys weren't as sore, and that's that's got to help us. And we're counting on that as far as uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday having good practices. Did you get a read maybe on how they've bounce back mentally I guess you know that's um as of practice yesterday it was it was good but how you bounce back mentally really is determined by when you get punched in the face again what do you, how do you respond you know um and that's you know today's practice is going to be hard it's going to be a physical practice it's going to be a hard practice um you know we're not keeping score so to speak um but it, it's Stacking those days, and then when we have that adversity, because we're going to have it on Saturday, uh, of being able to overcome it and being able to grow from it and being able to to stand up to it. And that's something that um, I know what Austin Moore is going to do. I know what Cooper Baby is going to do. It's some of the guys that maybe are pretty new to the stage and new to the scene that they got punched in the mouth last Friday night. Hopefully they learned enough from it, and we can teach enough from that that we respond better. Is there anything you can do uh, before this game to kind of break up the monotony of just waiting all day for that night game when you get a string of these in a row? Um, you know, we are going to do a few things different. You bet. I'm going to keep those in uh, under my hat, though. But we are going to do a few things different. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's a competitor. He, he is a deep competitor that um, was frustrated with some of the things that went down. And um, he's he learns really quickly. And he's played a lot of football um, anyway prior to coming here. Uh, and um, I, I love the way he goes about his business from not only at practice, but more importantly, watching film, studying the opponent. Um, and uh, we're fortunate we have him. He's one of our best. Have a message uh, about the outside noise, or did you just tell the guys to ignore it the best they can? How do, it just seems handles, harder now. Every, yeah, everybody handles it a little bit differently. Uh, Wyatt, if you're an older guy, you've probably heard it before and you've you've learned how to silence it. Uh, if you're a younger guy, you're, you're not quite maybe mature enough or know how to handle that. We, we've kind of done that. A with our older guys helping the younger guys, with our coaches helping the younger guys, um, all, all the things. But you're 100 percent accurate. It's um, it's uh, much more challenging in today's age. 